Welcome back. So the second half of the week had Devon starting out by uh, using the winglet outer skin to uh, lay up these little access panel covers and ultimately just pop them out and trim them off and you've got an instant cover. So those there they are under the bag and they did ones for both sides there. And here's Dan mixing up some high soles so he can uh, bond the firewall onto uh, the fuselage onto the A-frames and the other braces that he did uh, last time and as you can see here he's just getting it underway so just putting the high sole on there pretty thick and uh, smoothing it all out before putting the um, firewall on and there's also going to be a bottom close out as well and a top close out there to make that whole setup even uh, more rigid uh, but there it is bonded on and uh, held into place with some clicos and some pins and also some rivets so uh, that's that job done. So on Thursday it was time to transfer the engine from the stand that it's been on for a long time now over to uh, the firewall on the fuselage. So um, this is a big momentous kind of day really, the mating of the two pieces. So we had our hoist set up uh, on the gantry there of our CNC machine and uh, basically picked up the engine. Here we got our load cell carrying it as well. So you can actually see the total weight. So 100, 813 pounds there, but um, there was 24 pounds of chain and stuff there. So we're 789, but that's basically for everything, including a heavy uh, heat exchanger. So I think we're in kind of where we want it to be. Um, still a little heavy, but um, for the power and all, you know, the two turbos and all that stuff, uh, it all adds up. But anyway, as you can see, there it is all bolted on, even with the prop on. So um, looking pretty good there and pretty happy about that and there it is with the prop off and just the intake tray and also the intake scoop put on there to see how that all fits so uh, coming together now and meanwhile Devin and Jeff are in the process now of uh, just prep sanding these various skins so the ribs can all be bonded into place these are the two uh, inner skins for the winglets and you can see um, they've marked out exactly what needs to be sanded there and these are the ones the other skins for the wings so that's the upper one of the upper skins there see everything's been marked out where it needs to be prepped so those are coming along it won't be too long and uh, we'll be able to start putting some wings together Jeff's going to be taking a week off beginning on uh, next Wednesday so that'll slow us down a little bit but there's plenty of other things going on in the shop so you guys won't have uh, you know to worry too much about not seeing anything and I ran, ran up to Brits on uh, Friday uh, yesterday to uh, quickly make some bushings to hold the uh, foreplane onto the forward bulkhead and here I'm just um, you know working on this stainless steel rod on the lay there and just cleaning up the end there in preparation for drilling uh, and reaming a hole through the middle of that and here you can see I've moved on to drilling the hole so there was four of these bushings two short ones and two long ones and then uh, once they were uh, drilled and reamed I uh, had uh, Brit weld these uh, stainless washers onto them in order to sort of complete the bushing so and everybody's going to comment oh that's not how you use a lathe and probably not I have no idea what I'm doing <laughs> it seems to be working okay but anyway um, you free, feel free to leave comments and criticisms about how I'm not using the lathe correctly. And this is what the finished results look like. So there's the bushings welded onto the washers. So, or at least, yeah, the sleeves that I uh, drilled on the lathe. And so that one I think sits in there. I think that's how Jeff has it. And then the other side will bolt through the forward bulkhead, which is about that th thick. So that's why we need the longer bushing. Um, so now we have a way of uh, properly mounting that to the forward bulkhead. And here's a bit more of a close-up look of the engine mounted to the firewall there. As you can see, a lot of things are just still sitting there in place. That radiator and the um, intercooler above it are just sitting there. They need to have holes drilled in there to mount them um, properly so they're not going to move around. And then down here, we've got... Uh, the heat exchanger sitting at the bottom there that's not going to live there it's actually going to live up above that and uh, Dan's already got the uh, fuel filter and one of the fuel pumps installed there 
and some of the fuel lines already run before we did all this other stuff and as you can see you know the battery cables and the other heater cables there's a bunch of stuff going on there that's already done so um, moving along fairly rapidly with getting this all organized and uh, just to give you another update on the pressurization we had a little bit of an issue with our compressor right now it's uh, not coming on automatically so we're going to do an oil change hopefully on Monday we're waiting for the oil to arrive and then I'll be able to do run another pressure test we're just getting ready to run the final test and see if we can get it up to five and a half psi and then the compressor started playing up and then it was time to work on the engine so it didn't really get to run it but I figured out um, kind of why we were getting the door seal leaks and, and it's mainly because of the expansion of the cabin and it turns out that the a-pillars actually expand as much as a quarter of an inch open there which is just enough to allow the seals to sort of break and I made some adjustments there that I think we should be able to uh, keep it there but worst case scenario we'll still be able to hit like a uh, four and a half psi which at 25,000 feet would give us a 10,000 foot cabin at least you know for the prototype and we can address this problem uh, when the redesign of the doors is done for production but anyway uh, I think it's interesting to look at the fuselage now like this and you see it um, the whole thing looks a lot longer now um, kind of getting the, the proper shape whereas before it was kind of stubby um, without having anything on the back and the weight uh, came out fairly well it's a lot lighter in the nose now but still nicely balanced um, it's not in no chance of it tipping backwards or anything like that so uh, yeah, a lot of progress this week and um, next week we'll be getting that engine running again and hopefully another pressure test. So that's our update for this week and uh, thanks again for watching and tune in again next Tuesday and see uh, how things are progressing next week.